Welcome to the live service from Family Worship Center. Family Worship Center is located at Jimmy Swagger Ministries in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This service is also available live on Sun Life Radio and online at sunlifetv.com. We'll have praise and worship from the Family Worship Center singers and musicians, a time for prayer, plus the anointed preaching of God's Word. Now let's go live to the Family Worship Center Sanctuary as the service begins.
Hallelujah. Because I'm not looking to man, I'm looking to God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship Him this morning. Lord, it's your faithfulness we look to. And we depend on you. Like Sarah of old, Lord, we count you faithful who has promised. Lord, we know you're faithful. Praise God, praise Hallelujah. God. We sing worthy. We sing worthy. We sing worthy to the Lord. We sing. We sing.
Come on, put your hands together this morning. Oh, hallelujah. We've got something to shout about. We've got something to dance about. We've got something to lift our voices about. And it's not an election. It's not a candidate. It's Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Turn around and greet somebody and welcome them into the service this morning. And those of you joining us by Sun Life Broadcasting Network, television, radio, internet, wherever that you are watching and listening, we are so glad to have you. Now that service has begun, let me remind everyone to make sure that all your cell phones or other electronic devices are switched off. Well, we've got this morning two very, very distinguished, very distinguished guest, honored guest, two of my grandbabies. Harrison, Harper, come up here. Come on. Come on, yeah. There you are. Come on, Harper. Come on, Harrison. Come on, baby. Wow, you look beautiful today. And you got your purse. You're a typical woman. Come on, sweetie. Come on. All right, let's go right out here. Come on. I want everybody to see y'all. Yeah. This is Harper. She'll be three years old in? March. March. Yeah. Can you wave at everybody? <laughs> Harrison, how you doing? Can you give Pops five? <laughs> Can you look this way? <laughs> He's a little grumpy this morning. He didn't get all of his sleep. And this is Cliff, my son-in-law. He's real short, as you can tell. Jennifer, would you stand? Jennifer. Oh, we're so glad to have Jennifer and Cliff. Your granddaughter will be four, not three. Four, I'm sorry, four. Hey, I'm old. <laughs> yes. Tomorrow it... <laughs> you should know. I will defer to my senior. Tomorrow is Bible-thon. Amen. And you know, last month we set an all-time record, but we've got to finish out tomorrow our Bibles for Russia and other places, and we're going to need all of the phones filled, and we're going to need you to help us out. So all of our phone volunteers, please, please do your best to help us tomorrow. Tonight at 6 o'clock, a dear, dear friend of mine and the ministries that's ministered here several times before, all the way from the great state of West Virginia, Lewisburg, West Virginia, and by way of Louisiana. Brother Dale, you say, Dale, would you stand? He preaches for us every time he's back home visiting family and he works for the state of West Virginia and is a minister of the gospel. Well, this morning, we want to welcome. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Oh, I don't, that doesn't sound good. Are you ready? To welcome 319 brand new Family Worship Center Media Church members. 319. That's the most ever on a Sunday morning. And we're going to get through these as quickly as we can from Alabama. Blaze, Blake, Gail, Margaret, Patricia, Robert, Sarah, Teddy, Tony, William, Arkansas, Elisa, Anna, Deanna, Irwin, Floyd, Jacob, Larry, Michael, Mindy, Misty, Pam, Ronnie, Sandy, Sarah, Tyler, Virginia, Arizona, Bernie, Claudia, Elizabeth, Linda, Renee, California, Angela, Barbara, 
uh, Betty, and then another Betty, Bonnie, Catalino, Daniel, Gary, Jewel, Judy, Marion, Tammy, Tim, from Colorado, Claudine, Jeffrey, Lee, Connecticut, Linda, Washington, D.C., Mary, Delaware, Hassie, Martha, Florida, Brittany, Edna, Eileen, Ella, Helen, Kenneth, Maria, Marissa, Marla, Michael, Pamela, Raymond, Robert, Shirley, Violet, Georgia, Bailey, Bobby, Ernestine, Gary, Gloria, James, Janice, Joyce, Larry, Ruthie, Iowa, Dean, Idaho, Barbara, Illinois, Aaron, Brian, Darlene, Diane, Dwayne, Frank, Janice, Joe, Juana, Lewis, Mary, Maxine, Nancy, Sarah, Verna, Yvonne M., and then Yvonne P. All right, we have from Indiana, Arthur, Bill, Doris, Nathan, Richard, Roger, Ruth, Syraporn, Tammy, from Kansas, David, and Verda, from Kentucky, Gladys, Olivia, and Sue, from Louisiana, Carol, David, and Rhonda, from Massachusetts, Alicia, from Maryland, David, Janice, Joanne, Shannon, and Valerie, from Maine, Diane, from Michigan, Billy, Carol Ann, Katina, Daryl, David, Deborah, Doris, Gerald, Joan, Josephine, Judith, Robert, and Rose, from Minnesota, Sherry, from Missouri, Angela, Cora, Larry, and Shirley, from Mississippi, Ethel, Gary, Hiltrip, Irene, Jerry, Lori, Melissa, Mervyn, and Yvonne, from Montana, Rick and Rosemary, from North Carolina, Carol, Chandler, Christine, Darlene, Francis, Gerald, Helen, Ailita, James, Jerry, Kina, Christy, Larry P., Larry S., Lucas, Mary, Nick, Nola, Pamela, Patricia, Phoebe, Ruth, and Terry, from North Dakota, Sherry, from Nebraska, Amy and Jamie, from New Jersey, Diane, George, and Mike, from New Mexico, Donna and Mike, from Nevada, Wendy, from New York, Connie, Corrine, Daniel, Leonard, Margaret, Peggy, and Rosa, from Ohio, Adrian, Barbara, Carol, Deborah, Frank, James, Karen, Kathleen, Linda E., Linda H., Linda S., Paul P., Paul B., Paul H., Robert, Cheryl, and Stephen, from Oklahoma, Hazel, Herman, James, Ruth, and Shelley, from Oregon, Carol, Jerry and Jerry, from Pennsylvania, Carmen, Catherine, Darlene, Irma, Joel, Mary, Nancy, Ronald, and Sharon, from South Carolina, Carolyn, Deborah, Jimmy, Kenneth, Mark, Teresa, and Vicki, from Tennessee, Anna, Bobby, Deborah, uh, Jean, Geneva, James, Jeremiah, Linda, Oscar, Sharon, and Steve, from Texas, Ann, Annette, Billy, Brandon, Brenda, David, Deborah, Donald, Dora G, Dora S, Douglas, Jeff, Joshua, and Judge, Lydia, Mahalia, Margarita, Marcel, Margie, Mary, Nathan, Nalita, Norma, Oscar, Pat, Patricia, Ramiro, Rosalind, Rose, Sarah, Ter Teresa, Tommy, Valinda, Velma, Walter, and Winston, from Virginia, Bruce, we have Carolyn, David, James, Melanie, Pamela, Rebecca, and Cheryl from Vermont Lee, from Washington, Craig, Dolores, Donna, Ernest, Evelyn, Gail, Joe, John, Christy, Laura, uh, Lori, Lynn, Raymond, and Rhonda from Wisconsin, Angela, Helen, Karen, and Michael from West Virginia, Alexia, Dreama, Emmett, Joel, Joseph, and Josephine from Wyoming, Kathy from South Africa, Damien from Brazil, Jose and Maria. From Canada, Karen. From Ireland, Jerry, Mary, and Rita. From Nigeria, I'm going to do my best to pronounce this name, Olor Quandra. And then you have from the United Kingdom, Emmanuel, Ronrio, and Russell. So Family Worship Center, would you stand? Face this camera over here to my left, and let's welcome these 319 members to the Family Worship Center Media Church. And we're so glad to have each and every single one of you. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. 319 people. We are excited. Family Worship Center, Resurrection Choir, and singers. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come and let us exalt his name together. My soul does make its boast in the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him in accordance to the, his excellent greatness. Praise him on the trumpet. Praise him on the drum. Praise him on the high sounding cymbal. Praise him on the low sounding cymbal. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Somebody 
once a sinner far from Jesus I was perishing with cold But the blessed Savior heard me When I cried Well then he placed his arms around me And he led me to the fold Now I'm living on that hallelujah your son one more time what's a sinner far from Jesus I was perishing with cold but the blessed Savior heard me when I cried you know he didn't reprimand me he didn't slap me around he didn't tell me how bad I was, but he put his arms around me. <laughs> Woo! And he led me to the foehold. Now I'm living on that hallelujah sign. You got a second verse to that. Praise God. Though the world may sweep around me with her dazzle, and her dreams. Yet I envy not her vanities and pride. For my soul looks up to heaven where the golden sunlight gleams. And I'm living on that hallelujah side. You got some aches on that thing. Hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, oh glory be to Jesus, let those hallelujahs roll, let me ring my Savior's praises for Is always shining there the skies are always bright this no place for gloomy Christians no gloomy Christians no gloomy Christians to abide for my soul is filled with music and my heart Great delight. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Stop, stop just a minute, please. I don't want to see a frown in this place. If you're saved, 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 saved. You see, there the sun is always shining. There the sky is always bright. Tis no place for gloomy Christians. Oh, long face like you could eat oats out of a half-inch gas pipe. <laughs> to abide. 
for my soul is filled with glory and my heart pure delight you see if you're saved it doesn't make any difference if you have a dollar or ten trillion dollars my lord if your name is written down in the lamb's book of life you're on your way to heaven and i'm living on that hallelujah so high. Oh, 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 glory be to Jesus. Bring my Savior's praises fire wide. I've opened up toward heaven all the windows on my soul. in this place all the good happen. Glory to God. My, my, my. Praise the Lord. Oh, I can feel that. I'll tell you why, because they're gone at last. Gone at last. Thank God my sins are gone at last. Oh, I had a long Trigger that bad, bad time. But my sins gone at last. Praise God. Uh, I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to stop. But it's hard because I'm on my way to heaven. And the journey gets sweeter every day. Talking with Jesus. Walking with Jesus all along the way. Well, my soul gets so happy that I shout and I sing night and day. Well, I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. Well, I'm on my way to heaven. Journey gets sweeter. you to come please we still believe our Lord heals the sick he still delivers he is able to do all things Jesus is the sweetest name I'll ever know i 
To take the Lord's Supper is a very special thing. It's to commemorate, just put it right there just a second, please. It is to commemorate his death at Calvary's cross. He didn't tell us exactly when to take it. He said, as oft as you do, take it. Do it in remembrance of me. The Holy Spirit gave to the Apostle Paul warnings about this. First of all, and most important by far, your faith must be in Christ and what Christ has done for you at the cross. If you place your faith anywhere else, Paul said that you could become sick because of it and you could even die prematurely. You wouldn't lose your soul, but no one wants sickness. No one wants a premature death. Because what Jesus did at Calvary's cross is the single most important thing done in human history. 
what he did for humanity. Donnie, could you read it, please? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Would you hold up the wafer and crush it between your fingers, symbolizing his broken body, and take it, please. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Praise this God. do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death oh, yes. till he come. Hold up the cup symbolic of his shed blood and take it, please. It is no secret what God can do. What is done? so very pleased and happy to have you with us today and to worship the Lord together. I'm a little bit prejudiced, you have to understand that, but I don't think there's any church in the world like Family Worship Center, praise God. And uh, as Donnie mentioned, we're so happy to have our, my great, my granddaughter and um, their little boy, the little girl, my great-grandson and great-granddaughter. And Cliff, I remember the day, it was in youth camp. It must have been, I don't know, 20 more years ago. And it was a morning service. And I had driven up to McDonald's to get something. And Roger Edinger called me on my car phone. We didn't have those little hand things today that are not worth two cents. <laughs> Why do you say that? You go into a restaurant, you don't see anything but people looking at those things. Uh, anyway, he called me and said, Brother Swaggart, your granddaughter Jennifer just went through to the baptism with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise God. I, I sat there in that car and wept, thankful to the Lord, because that's the greatest thing, that your loved ones are saved and filled with the Spirit. Donna, are you ready to sing? Praise God. But I'm running my last mile home Ring the bell, blow the horn Shout hallelujah Jordan, roll on back and let me through Let me through Angels, take me to the throne David, play your prettiest music I'm a weary pilgrim running my my home. I'm a weary pilgrim running my last 
God, praise God. As Donnie mentioned, tomorrow will be Bible Thon, 30,000 expositors study Bibles going to Russia. The devil didn't make it. He locked up that country for 70 years, but today the door is open because Jesus Christ has opened it. Glory to God. Those Bibles are being printed right now. And just before service today, uh, Catherine Tingle handed me a check that'll pay for over 100 of those Bibles. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in the morning, Jim and I will begin at 5 a.m. And I want every last one of you to get up <laughs> and pray for us <laughs> and go to that phone or answer it one or the other. And we praise the Lord for his blessings. Let's receive the tithe and the offerings, okay? Come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I ask that every need would be met, not only of the church, but of every person under the sound of my voice, wherever in the world 
that person may be, I ask that you bless them. Bless them financially. Bless them physically. But above all, bless them spiritually. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Can I get you to come, please? Well, come and go with me. This song was written back in the 1950s. By Mosey Lister. This is what it says. There were so many, many others he might have chosen to follow him. Others with learning and greater distinction to follow him. Men with authority and forceful ability Who know how to speak and be heard I don't know exactly why I'm here at all but today I follow my Lord. Well, He chose me, and He I could not say no when he said, follow me and you'll be a fisher of men. And from Yes, from now on, I will not look back on the things left behind. He chose me to follow him.
know it was business as usual that day when I heard him say follow me instantly I left all behind me when he said follow me I emptied myself of my old life completely with no thought that this could be wrong and as long as I follow the steps of my master I know I'm where I belong For He chose me Yes, He chose me I could not Say no when he said, follow me, and you'll be a fisher of men. And from One more time, please. For he chose me, thank God he chose me. I could not say no. Oh, and from the now, yes, and from now, oh, I will not look back on the things left. He chose me to follow him. I will not look back on the things left behind. He chose me to follow. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles this morning to the eighth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. The eighth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, reading the first three verses. Verse number one says, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, you can make me clean. 
And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately, and immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. And I want to minister this morning on the subject, I will, I will be thou clean. The words of the master, I will be thou clean. Would you bow your heads? Father, we come before you this morning in the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you for the presence of the Lord that has been in this house from the very moment that service began this morning. We ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to minister the word and that same anointing to rest upon your people that they may receive that which the Lord, which you have to say to them this morning. Take it to their hearts, to their souls, to their lives. And Lord, we give you all the praise and glory. And everybody said, amen and amen. The text begins with this statement. When he, of course, speaking of our Lord, when he was come down from the mountain, it was speaking of the events of the last three chapters that is known as the Sermon on the Mount. When the Lord finished preaching and giving the greatest sermon that's ever been preached in the world. When he comes down to the bottom of the mountain, the Bible said that the throngs gathered around him. And when we get to this eighth chapter, of course, understanding that when Scripture was originally written, the books of the Bible were not broken up by chapters. It was a continuous letter. But in this eighth chapter, the Lord will show to those in Israel and to show to us today how much power that he has. We will read in this chapter that in verses 2 through 16, we'll see the Lord demonstrate his power as God over disease, physical disease, and the greatest disease of all, sin. And then... In verses 24 through 26, we will see the Lord demonstrate his power as God over nature. And then in verses 28 through 32, we'll see the Lord Jesus Christ demonstrate his power as God over demon spirits. Now, I've said all of that and broke that down for this reason. If the Lord can handle disease, sin, nature... And demon spirits, whatever you got going on in your life, he can handle it. Now, do you understand that this morning? Let me say it again. If he can handle physical disease, if he can handle spiritual disease, if he can take control over the elements, nature itself, and if he can take authority over demon powers, there is nothing in your life that the Lord can't. He can handle your stuff. He can handle your bills. He can handle your disease. He can handle your divorce. He can handle your children in sin. He can handle the powers of darkness that come to steal, to kill, and destroy. Don't ever minimize the power of God. He's got the power. He's got the power to take nothing and create everything. He's got the power to change the sinner into a saint in the blink of an eye. He's got the power to raise the dead, open blinded eyes, unstuck deaf ears, and the lame walk, and lepers are cleansed because he's God. Yes, yes. You ain't got no, pardon my bad Louisiana grammar, but you ain't got no stuff that's too tough for Jesus Christ. Bad grammar and all, I'm going to say it again. You ain't got no stuff that Jesus Christ has already handled at Calvary's cross. Then the text says, behold, there came a leper. 
In the fifth chapter of Luke, in his account of this great miracle, he describes this leper. He uses the term, he was full of leprosy. He was covered in this loathsome, horrible disease. He was full. I'm hammering on that. He was full of leprosy. If you know anything about the Bible at all, you know that in the Old Testament especially, the Lord would use this horrible disease of leprosy to portray to us how awful sin is. How sin starts into the heart of man and it begins to eat away and it destroys everything that they hold dear. You must understand that humanity today just doesn't have a sin problem, but humanity is full of leprosy. From the top of the head to the sole of the feet, those that don't know Jesus Christ, they don't just have a little sin, they are full of sin. They are controlled by sin. Everything about them speaks of sin. I, I don't really think that we in the church realize how low our country has sunk as it comes to morals. Just basic morality. I, I don't think the church sees the world as the Lord sees it. The church has the attitude of see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. We want to get along with everybody. But this idea of man being full of sin, full of leprosy, to use the biblical analogy, it should have been made clear to you this past week how fall how deep this nation has fallen in sin. All of the news last week was full of the story of this lion that was killed in Zimbabwe. Cecil the lion. And oh, they were up in arms. I mean, the, the, the news media, it was on every primetime news show, all of the news networks, that's all they were talking about, that some lion got shot and killed. He was a national treasure, and that may all be true. But at the very same time that the media was throwing that into our homes, at the very same time, Videos had been released about Planned Parenthood and how that they take aborted babies and harvest and sell off their body parts. Even with one of them sitting at the table as they were drinking their wine, laughing and talking, and talking how much this part of the baby you can get. And, this, and she says, one of them says, I want to buy a Lamborghini which cost $250,000, and this is going to help me. God, help us. Are you alive out? God, help us. When we as a people, we will get up in arms over a dead animal, but we won't say nothing, nothing at all when babies are murdered in the womb of their mothers and their organs are harvested and sold for profit. God help us. God help us. What kind of people are we? What kind of people have we sunk to? Why? Why isn't the church up in arms? Listen, there's been over 54 million babies aborted since abortion became legal. The world is not going to speak up for that murdered child, and abortion is murder. And it's not a fetus, but at the moment of conception, 
It is a human being created by God. Created by God. They have no voice. They are the least of our citizens, if you will, as far as no rights. No one will speak for them. The world is not going to speak for them. But the church should be speaking for them. The church should be standing up saying, my God, have you lost your mind? This is not a puppy dog. This is not a, this is a living human being that you are destroying. And then to add insult to injury, making a profit off of the selling of the parts of babies. God, help us. God, help us. God, help us when the church yawns and says nothing. That means the church has become complicit. The church is complacent and complicit in this horrible, demonic, devilish act. I dealt with this Wednesday on Mother's Program, and and I was shocked at some of the emails I got from quote-unquote Christians. Oh, I don't like what you're saying. That lion was created by God. And he's just going on. It was one lady in particular. I read her email over the air. And when I got through reading it, I looked at the camera. I said, ma'am, you're the problem. You're the problem. For one hour, I've been talking about the horrible, brutal death and murder of a living soul, a child, a baby, and then its parts being peddled to the highest bidder to enrich some demon-possessed agent of Planned Parenthood. And all you have to talk about in your email is a lion? You're the problem. You're the problem, I said. You're the reason why the nation is in the shape that it's in. Listen to me. I doubt any congressmen or senators will hear this or any governors. Listen, for every baby that has been murdered in the womb of its mother, and you stand for that, and you voted for it, and you put the weight of your power and your office behind it, you are a murderer. You are a cold-blooded murderer. And one day, when you stand before the Lord at the great white throne judgment, The blood of those babies will be on your hands. But the church has abdicated its position of morality. We are to be the voice and the conscience to the nation of what is right and what is wrong. But instead, you go to church on Sunday morning, and you got comedians in the pulpit. You got others telling you how to get rich. You got others telling you that you're a champion. The whole idea is to make you feel good. Oh, I feel so good. Don't don't burden me down with all of that stuff. I don't want to hear about, oh, you're you're just messing with my vibe. I don't want to mess with your vibe. I want to destroy your vibe. So that you'll wake up. It is our responsibility as the church. And it is the pulpit's responsibility to stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord. It doesn't matter if the Supreme Court has ruled it legal in the Bible. It is a sin. God says it's a sin, and that's enough. From the top of the head to the sole of the feet, the church is diseased. There is no soundness in it. It is full of putrefying sores. And we have turned our back upon God 
and our cup of iniquity has spilled over. And we're trying to have a party. And people are dying and go to hell. God, forgive us. God, forgive us. For we have sinned and we have transgressed. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us. God, don't pass America by. But give us one more chance. Give us one more chance to be the church. Give us one more chance to try to make a difference in this world full of lepers and full of sin that are dying and go to hell. Anoint us to proclaim that there is an answer to every problem that plagues the human heart. And it's Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We need some John the Baptist to stand up and say, repent, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, and the tree that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be hewn down and cast in fire and burn with fire unquenchable. Oh, but that makes people mad. Who cares? Oh, you might offend somebody. Good, good. I hope I stomp all over your toes and you wake up and say, my God, what have I been doing? What have I been doing? We've got to come back to the altar. We've got to come back to righteousness and holiness and stand for something. Nobody stands for anything anymore. The Bible in the book of Leviticus describes the manner in which the leper had to live and conduct himself. All of it was done to paint a picture of the horror of sin. The law said that first, the leper, the leper first of all was diagnosed not by a doctor, but by the priest. Because man's problem is not an economic problem, a political problem, a social problem. It is a moral problem. And the only ones qualified to speak is not the government or the psychologist but the true God-called, spirit-filled, anointed preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The priest diagnosed it. That means that sometimes the preacher has to stand up and say, I love you, but that's a sin. I don't want anything bad to happen. I want something good to happen, but I've got to warn you, if you persist in this path that you're going, the end destruction will be damnation. And you'll be cast out into outer darkness, the lake of fire, where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth for eternity. Hell is real. That means that every preacher that's ever lived, when they stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, they're going to have to give an account for every message they preached or every message they refused to preach. The priest identified it. Once it was identified, the Bible said that it's the outer cloak that people wore, that it it was ripped from the bottom in the middle all the way up to the top seam, ripped open, torn open. And the reason for that, the Bible said in Leviticus, his clothes shall be rent or ripped apart. It was... It symbolized that man is undone and cannot save himself. And then the Bible said that his head was bare. The men, they wore little hats that symbolized the fact that they were under the covering of Jehovah. But the leper was not allowed 
to wear that hat. And in effect, it stated that the leper was open to the wrath and judgment of God. Once again, all to portray to us the horror of sin. God is love. Now, you better never forget that. God is love. But the same God of love is also a God of wrath and judgment. And he has to be. The same one that you, how can you describe the love of God? I cannot do it. How, the, how can we that are finite describe him that is infinite? He doesn't just have love. He is love. But this same one who you could actually call his name, love. I remind you, he's the same one that took rope and made a whip and turned over the tables and chased the money changers out of the temple. He's a God of love, but he's also a God of wrath and judgment. For those who refuse his plan of salvation. But here's something that's good. If you, if you especially in the Old Testament, Israel would so many times fall to the side Worshipping idols, worshipping demon spirits, backslidden from God. But every time they called on the Lord, He is merciful. He will go to the nth degree to, to make sure nobody goes to hell. But the fact is, man's stubbornness is sometimes greater than the love of God. And man says, no, I am my own God. And they will be damned forever. It said that he should put a covering over his upper lip. That meant that he had to keep separate. And anyone that would come close, he had to immediately start crying. Unclean! 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 To warn the person close by that there was someone who was defiled. And not to come near them. Sin makes you dirty. Sin will pull you down to the lowest morass of bondage until you find yourself doing things that you never thought that you would do because you're unclean. It doesn't matter if you've got a degree from Harvard or Yale or Princeton. It doesn't matter if your life is given over to good works. I got an email last week, this dear lady, she said, I have just found SBN a few months ago. She said, for 60, 56 years, I was a practicing Catholic. And I was taught that if I do enough good works, that I will please God and that will get me to heaven. And then I found SBN. And the first thing I found out, I wasn't saved. But then she said this. She said, but I, I cannot, I don't understand. I don't understand why all of my good works doesn't count for something. I don't understand, she said. How a person can live a wicked life and never do anything good and at the moment of their death call on the Lord and he will save them. And I read that email and I said, ma'am, that's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. And then I told her, no, your works mean nothing to God. Because works will not save you. But let me clarify this. If you're truly born again, you're going to have some good works. But you don't do it to earn your salvation. You're already saved. You're doing it because that's just what a Christian does. Unclean said he shall dwell alone. There's a loneliness to sin. Man tries to fill that loneliness with alcohol, drugs gambling, sexual immorality, and every kind of behavior that one can come up with, all trying 
to feel that loneliness in the heart. Billy Graham made a statement. I, it must have been 40 years ago. One of the greatest statements I've ever heard, he said, the soul of man is so big, only God can fill it up. Only God can fill it up. Dwell alone. They couldn't, they couldn't live among people. They were cast outside of the camp. They had no social interaction with anyone except those that were filled with leprosy like them. This was the beginning of the Lord's ministry. This leper, I don't know how that he heard that Jesus had come down the mountain. And though the law of Moses said that he wasn't welcome, and though the law of Moses said that he could not come where there were undefiled people, though the law said that he risked death by imposing himself into those that were not smitten with leprosy, something inside this leper knew that Jesus Christ was his only hope. I don't know how he heard, but he heard. That's why what we do every month with the share and the bible thons are so important because they've got to hear. They've got to hear. They're full of leprosy, and they've got to hear that the only way they can be cleansed is through an encounter with Jesus Christ. They've got to hear. And the Bible said when he saw Jesus, he came and he worshipped him. Now I want you to note before I finish that thing, I want you to notice the Lord never broke one of the Mosaic law, not one iota. Did he ever break any of the law of Moses? He's the only one that ever kept it. He said, I am not coming, Matthew 5, I have not come to destroy the law, but I have come to fulfill. He fulfilled the law perfectly. But I want you to notice, in spite of him being a leper, the Lord did not hold him back. That means it doesn't matter how spiritually diseased you are. The Lord will never turn you away. Oh, somebody needs to shout on He worshiped him. That, that was a heartfelt acknowledgement that I may be a leper, but I believe you're the one that the patriarchs have prophesied about. I believe you are the Messiah. I believe you are the Son of God. I don't care what the rulers believe. I don't care what the Pharisees believe. I believe you're the one whom I was taught from from a child that one day Messiah would come and you are the Messiah and worshiped him. This also tells us how we're to come before the Lord. We're to come before the Lord worshiping instead of just saying lord i got this problem da, 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 da. no no start it off lord i come this morning in the name of your son jesus i've come to worship you i've come to acknowledge that you're god and there's no one like you i've come to give you the worship and the adoration and the glory that you deserve and lord listen to me lord if you never answer another prayer if you never answer another prayer for me the day you saved me it was enough and i'm going to worship you for what you've done in my life i'm going to worship you for what you've done in the life of my family i'm going to worship you for what you have done what you are doing and what you're going to do i'm going to worship you just because you're God and I love you and then it said saying Lord he knew by the title Lord he knew that Jesus was the Messiah then he says if you will you can make me clean that showed complete confidence in the power of the Lord to do it. But it also, when he said, if. 
if you will. There, there's some debate that this could have well been, this leper could have well been the very first leper to be cleansed by the Lord. I, I believe that. I believe it was. I believe by the construction of the sentence that there had not yet been another leper cleansed. There was no doubt in his heart that the Lord had the power. But there was doubt in his heart about whether the Lord would do it. Do you understand that? He was convinced in his heart and mind, he can do it. He can do it. He can do it. If he can bring out the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage, he can do it. If he can open the Red Sea, he can do it. If he can open the Jordan, he can do it. If he can push down Jericho walls, he can do it. If he can bring an idol worshiper by the name of Abram and turn him into Abraham and make him the father of us all, he can, he's got the power. He's got, if he, if he can anoint David as a teenage boy to take five smooth stones and kill Goliath and jump on top of that carcass and take the sword in his hand and cut his head off. He's got the power. But will he do it for me? That's, the, that's where the church is. That's where most of the church, they know he can. But the devil has so been so successful at beating us down with fear and doubt and condemnation and every other thing that, that telling us, well, he'll do it for them, but he won't do it for you. Oh, yeah, he'll do it for them, and he'll do it for you. Uh, no, he won't do it for you. Oh, you look, look over in the church. You know, that lady sitting right over there, she don't come but three Sundays in three months. And every time she's sick, she comes down, and they anoint her with oil, and she gets healed, and you ain't got healed yet. Oh, he'll take care of his bills, but he's not going to take care of your bills. You're nothing. You're not important. Oh, you're in a separate class. There is no such thing as a separate class in the kingdom of God. We are all children of God. We are all joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we have all been made to sit in heavenly places with him. And the promises of God are yea and amen for every single child of God. If, 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 if you will. If you will, you can make me clean, clean. That word clean, it, it, it means that a complete restoration from one state to another. One moment I'm a leper out of the camp. But if you make me clean, I will have complete restoration back into society, back with my family. I won't be a leper. I will be clean. Only Jesus can make the sinner clean. It's not how many New Year's resolutions you make, but it's an encounter with Jesus Christ. And then the Bible said, and Jesus, oh, I love this, put forth his hand and touched him. But it, it, the way the scripture reads, yeah, I got to explain it. If Jesus would have touched a leper, in his leprous disease, he would have broken the law of Moses and, had, and become defiled. That's right. That's right. So how, what, what do you mean? And he stretched out his hand. Why wasn't he undefiled? The very act of him picking up his hand. He said, I will. I will. By the very act of his spoken word. By the very act of his spoken word. You got to see it. There's that leper standing right there. Jesus, look at him. I don't eat. Will you do it? I will. I will. I will. And by the power of his spoken word, Instantly, in the blink of an eye, the leper was cleansed. Therefore, Jesus could have put his hand anywhere he wanted because he was no longer defiled. 
Do you get that? Do you understand that? You can't touch him. He's got leprosy. What? What? Where's the leper? He was covered from it. What? He's clean. He's clean. Look, all I've come to tell you this morning, the Lord is still saying, I will. He's still saying, I will. I will save you. I will heal you. I will deliver you. Oh, I, 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 I put this together. Oh, I just put this together. I will. Let me give you some I wills of God. I will establish my covenant. I will remember my covenant. I will bless them that bless you. I will not leave you. I will give you bread to eat. I will give you the good of the land. I will bring you up out of affliction. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will put none of the diseases of the Egyptians on you. I will rain bread from heaven for you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will give you rain in due season. I will give you peace in the land. I will walk among you. I will raise up a prophet. I will not fail thee. And I will not forsake thee. Somebody needs to shout. Behold, I will do a new thing in Israel. I will save my people. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. I will heal your backsliding. I will deliver you. I will redeem you. I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. I will pardon. I will put a new spirit with you. I will pour out. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. I will give you the sure mercies of God. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion. But this is the best. I will return. 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 return. Stand to your feet this morning. Singers, musicians, come on back. He's saying, I will. He's saying, I will. He's saying, I own the gold and the silver and the cattle on the hills. I own the oil underneath the ground. I'm healer. I'm the deliverer. I'm the savior. I'm the be- whatever you need. As long as it's my word, I will. I don't know what they're going to sing, but I don't want no funeral dirge. Because some of you came in this morning with a problem. I'm not really finished. I got some more to say, but that's enough. You've walked in here, you're sick in your body. Your finances are sick. Your marriage is sick. You got a problem in the home. You got this situation, that situation. And the devil's been lying to you and telling you that the Lord's not going to do anything about it, that he doesn't care about you, but he knows your name. He knows your name. He knows your name. As they begin to sing it, If you got a need, I want you to step out from where you are. And I want us to fill this octagon around. Do it. 
He never pushes you down, but He lifts His children up. Oh, hallelujah. He can prepare a table in the wilderness. He knows where your backslidden children are right now. Come on now, sing it. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's not one single need in your life that Jesus Christ did not address on that's Calvary's it. cross. That's right. That's good. Now, do you understand that? You're not unique in whatever you're facing. That's right. You're not the first person to be oppressed. You're not the first person to be gripped with fear and anxiety. You're not the first person to get a death sentence from a doctor. You're not the first person to get a floor foreclosure letter in the mail. From the beginning of creation till now, there's been many who have faced much greater and he delivered them. Praise God, yes. Yeah. We're going to pray. And listen. Praise God. Praise God. I can't be your faith. You've got to believe God for yourself. Don't try to put a date on a calendar somewhere and say, if it's not done by this date. Write the vision and make it plain. And though it tarry, wait for it. For in the end it shall speak, and it shall not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Though it tarry, wait for it. Though it tarry, wait for it. That's, that's what we call the struggle or the battle of faith. The Lord doesn't work at McDonald's. You don't drive up in one window, I mean one box, I hate those things and speak into the box and go to the next window and you got it. No. Sometimes there's a delay from the asking to receiving, but delay is not denial. It's a part of God's plan. But why? Because he's having to work something in our lives. Every test we face Every test we face, every battle you fight is really a battle of your faith, whether you believe or you doubt. Amen. That's it right there. And you cannot grow. Your faith cannot grow unless that faith is challenged and tested. Amen. I'm 60 years old. To tell you something funny, you know, I'm... I've been up for over a year now on that treadmill, an hour, and I lost 20 pounds. But I noticed a couple weeks ago, it's, I'm still doing the same thing, but I'm, I gained a couple of pounds. I said, what in the world? I'm not eating any different. I'm not doing anything different. I'm doing it. And then I started reading yesterday. I mean, two, three days ago, I was reading this thing, and all of a sudden it said, hey, you may lose some weight cardio-wise, but it won't stay off. If you want to keep it off, you got to build muscle. I went, oh my God, Satan, get behind me. Get behind me. I hate weights as much as I hate that treadmill. But I went to the closet, got my weights out, and Thursday morning I started, and I am so sore. 
I mean, every time I do this, it's like somebody stabbing me because my muscle. But hey, but if I stick with it, a month from now, I won't be sore. If you'll stick with it a month from now, if you stick with it, you won't find yourself by the wayside. It will come to pass. Keep believing. Father, in the name of Jesus, these are your children. They have needs, spiritual, physical, financial, domestic, emotional. They have come down here not in a spirit of defeat, but in a spirit of victory. For they have heard your words, I will, I will, I will, I will. And Lord, let that faith grow to believe you for the miraculous. And Lord, we bring tomorrow before you. We're asking, Lord, that you would speak to hearts all across this nation. And Lord, that we would not only meet our goal, but we would go beyond our goal. Because you said, I will, I will, I will. Turn around around shake somebody's hand hug their neck and tell them the Lord said I will we hope you were blessed and enjoyed this live family worship center service family worship center in Baton Rouge Louisiana holds three services weekly Sunday at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Central Time and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time to become a member of the Family Worship Center Media Church, call 800-288-8350 or go to jsm.org. All services are broadcast live on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network, including Sun Life Radio and online at sunlifetv.com.